There is so many conflicting information regarding nutrition and it can become so overwhelming. There are so many different places to turn to if you're trying to eat healthier, which is good, but it can also be very, very difficult to know who to actually trust and what to actually do. It can be such a struggle to just learn basic nutrition tips and to get easy, actionable steps. And this is terrible because having a healthy relationship with food and eating the right foods is so, so crucial for for good health. So I decided to make a video that kind of compiles all of the information I think you need to eat healthy when you are a beginner to healthy eating. And I hope that this can be a trustworthy reference for you and that it will have all the information you need to kickstart your healthy eating journey. I'm also going to be linking to a bunch of other videos that I made um, more in depth in certain topics, but yeah. So this is going to be a pretty long video. I'm really sorry. I'm going to try not to get into too much detail. Um, if you want more detail, then you can read the blog post I made about this subject. And without further ado, here we go. Healthy eating means eating a wide variety of foods that contain all of the nutrients to help you thrive. Healthy eating doesn't mean setting a ton of restrictions or banning all of the foods that you like or having salads all day or being super thin at all costs. It's about eating balanced and varied and healthy meals that you enjoy, fueling yourself with the right foods, feeling happy and energized, and having a healthy relationship with food. So here are the healthy foods that most people can't go wrong with. And when I say most people, I mean you aren't allergic or intolerant to one of these foods, of course. So all the fruit and vegetables, you can never go wrong. You can never have too many fruit and vegetables. Whole grains such as oats and whole wheat pasta, brown rice, etc. Healthy protein like legumes and quinoa, and healthy fats like nuts and seeds. In general, eating mainly whole foods and limiting processed refined foods is the way to go. But as usual, this doesn't mean that you can never have these processed foods, that you can never have junk food. It's all about balance and moderation. Healthy eating is so important because so many diseases are linked to eating a poor diet. Having a healthy diet is literally the basis to live a happy and healthy life and your cells are literally made up of what you eat. So make sure that it is the right things. What are macronutrients and micronutrients? Now let's get into the basics of food composition. So there are three basic macronutrients that make up our food and they are carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Most foods are made up with a different mix of these macros, but here are some common foods within each macronutrient group. So you can find carbohydrates in bread, pasta, rice, starchy vegetables, legumes, fruit, foods with refined sugar. They give you four calories per gram. As for protein, you can find them in meat, fish, eggs, dairy, legumes, tofu, and they give you four calories per gram as well. As for fats, you can find them in oils, in nuts, in nut butter, in seeds, and in avocados, in fatty animal products, and they give you the most calories per gram at nine calories per gram. You should be getting in these macronutrients through a variety of foods, and everybody's different. Everybody likes to have a different ratio, but if you're looking for some general guidelines, around 50% of your calories at least should be coming from carbs, around 20 percent of your calories should be coming from fat and 30 percent should be coming from protein. So if you're eating 2,000 calories, about 1,000 of them should be coming from carbs, about 400 of them should be coming from fat, and 600 should be coming from protein. I made a few videos on the different macronutrients that you can check out in the description. Now micronutrients are also important as well. They are vitamins and minerals that you need to get in small, smaller doses than macronutrients, but you need them in order to survive. You have vitamins that are essential for energy production and your immune function, your organ function, um, healthy skin and hair. And we have minerals that are essential for our growth, for our bone health, for our metabolism, for our fluid balance. They include macro minerals like calcium and magnesium, for instance, and also trace minerals that are needed in smaller amounts like iron or zinc, for example. If you eat a variety of fruit and vegetables, of whole grains, of healthy fats, and healthy protein, then I'm sure that you won't have any trouble getting in all of your macro and micronutrients, 
But if you're more interested in learning where you can get specific macro or micronutrients and you know if you if you know that you're lacking some of them, then I have this good resource that you can check out in my blog post. Now we're going to talk about calories. A calorie is just a unit of measurement that measures the amount of energy that a food can give you. And calories are good because they are what give our body the fuel it needs to function. Although things aren't as simple as calories, calories in versus calories out, the amount of calories you consume obviously still plays a huge role in weight gain or weight loss. If you eat more calories than you need and then you burn off, then you will store them as fat. And if you don't eat enough calories, then you will lose weight. Again, the process is actually much more complicated than this and a bunch of different factors actually come into play, but this is just to give you some general notions. Although I don't recommend strict calorie counting for weight loss, I do think that it can be a good idea to have a general notion of your calorie needs and the calories that you're consuming. On average, women should consume about 2000 calories for weight maintenance, and for men, it's about 2500 calories. However, this depends on factors like your age, your weight, your height, your physical activity, and so on. And if you're interested in finding out how many calories you need, and then you can do so with a calculator. I'm going to be putting one in the description that is the most accurate uh, metabolic rate calculator. If you know your body fat percentage, there are also some formulas that you can use for even more precision. And these formulas are in my blog post, so don't hesitate to check that out. Now let's talk about portion size. So regarding portion size, I really, really think that most people eat way more than their actual needs. And this is not their fault. This is because we have been used to this. Our portion sizes are growing or grow and growing. Our plate sizes are growing. Everything is just becoming bigger and bigger. And so now it's very difficult to be satisfied with a normal, regular portion size that we would actually need. So if you've always been used to eating huge portions, portion sizes. I don't recommend drastically cutting them down overnight. That would not work. But what you should be doing is start learning about the calories that you find in different foods. Start to see how many calories are in a portion you serve yourself and then the calories that should be in an actual serving size. And so you can try to kind of get a general notion about how much you're eating and how much more you're eating than what you potentially should be eating. You can replace some of your high calorie processed foods with some whole healthier options and this will help reduce the calorie intake but not reduce your portion size because you still need to make sure that you're eating enough of course and that you're not going hungry. You should never starve yourself and go from a 5,000 calorie a day diet to a 2,000 calorie a day. Don't do that. It will lead to yo-yo dieting and binge eating and it just will not be good. An easy way to control your portion sizes when you're starting out and you don't want to be calorie counting everything is to use the plate method. And if you don't know what this method is and if you want to learn more about it, you can do so in the video that I made about it right here. But just really quickly, what you need to do is take a plate. So nine inch plate is the reference. And then you want to fill half that with vegetables or fruit, one fourth of it with a healthy lean protein and one fourth of it with healthy carbs. I do want to reiterate that I really don't recommend calorie counting for most people. If you have a general notion of your calories, of what you should be eating, of portion sizes, serving sizes, and all of that. But I do acknowledge that this is not the case for everyone and that lots of beginners have no clue about this. And I do think that it's important to have some sort of a, an idea about this. But if this is triggering to you and totally counterproductive, uh, do not by any means track your calories. This is just for people who feel like they need the guidelines and for who it is helpful. Now I'm going to be giving you some types of foods to eat and some foods to avoid. Before I get into this, I want to say that it's important not to classify foods as bad foods that you should never ever eat and good foods that you should have all the time. It's really about moderation and balance and no foods should be good or bad. All foods have different purposes. But that being said, of course, some foods are inherently healthier than other foods. And to give you some ideas and 
start some help to start out with, I'm going to be giving you some healthy foods. This mainly includes whole minimally processed foods such as vegetables and I made a video on how to eat healthy when you hate vegetables that you can find in the description. Also fruit and again I made a video on why the fruit and sugar is not bad. Whole grains like brown rice, whole wheat pasta, bulgur, quinoa, buckwheat, beans and legumes are also super super healthy foods and nuts and seeds. Now I'm going to give you some foods that you should not be eating on a regular basis but obviously they can and actually should have a spot on your plate once in a while if you enjoy these foods. And they mainly include super processed foods with tons of calories and very, very few nutrients. So you should avoid refined carbs such as cake, cookies, candy, and to a lesser extent, things that are made with white flour. You should also avoid trans fats and processed trans fats have been banned, but you can still find them in junk food, in snack foods, in ready to eat meals and things like that. And you should also really, really avoid processed meats such as salami, bacon, ham, all of these things. Again, I made tons of videos on different foods and their health benefits, so make sure to check out uh, my playlist on that. And as I often say, different foods are right for different situations. Having a salad will always be the best answer. It's important to have balanced meals, but if you really have no idea where to start by eating the foods that are healthy that I mentioned and staying clear of the ones that aren't, then you are off to a good start. Now I'm gonna talk about how to plan your meals. So learning all of this fun new information about food is all great until you actually have to cook your meals and you're coming home from a long day of work and you do not want to spend one hour steaming vegetables. That is totally understandable. A great way to deal with this would be to plan your meals and even better, prep your meals if you can. There are actually benefits to that and people who plan and prep their meals have lower rates of obesity. So I really suggest taking some time during the week, maybe on Sunday, to batch cook some of your meals for the week. You can cook like all of your grains, your rice, your pasta. You can cut and cook some vegetables and then put them, put everything in the fridge so that everything is just ready to go and much easier when it's time for you to eat and you don't have to sit there and think about what you're going to cook and be discouraged to cook this healthy the meal and end up just ordering pizza. If batch cooking just really isn't your thing, I really suggest at least planning out your meals and then writing them, them down so that you're not tempted to just eat your regular junk food every day and instead you can go home and know exactly what you need to cook and what you're going to be eating. And also what I recommend as well is to just make some, whenever you're cooking one meal, like say for your dinner, then just double the portion sizes so that you can have that for dinner and then for lunch the next day or for dinner like two nights uh, after that and that way you'll already have a pre-cooked meal ready to go. Sorry for the sun, it's really annoying. A big reason why people just end up ordering takeout or junk food is because of its convenience. So you want to do everything in your power to make healthy eating convenient for you. So with all this meal prep and batch cooking and stuff like that, that, that is great. You also don't hesitate to buy canned or frozen vegetables or pre-cooked legumes and grains because it's much easier to heat up a healthy balanced meal than it is to make one from scratch so you're more likely to stick to it and now a very important question should i go on a diet for a lot of people healthier eating means going on a diet and i don't necessarily agree 45 million americans go on a diet each year and yet two-thirds of them are overweight or obese most diets don't work long term and if they do result in weight loss then it usually doesn't last and diets are often far too restrictive so again initial weight loss but not sustainable once you start losing weight your metabolism will go down and your hunger level will go up and so it will be really difficult to maintain that weight loss so does this mean that you should just give up on healthy eating and losing weight altogether well obviously not the thing is you need to go for a complete lifestyle change instead of a diet you need to start eating and exercising and living in a way that can be maintained your entire life this is why anything extreme won't work because you'll end up yo-yo dieting if you do something that you hate 
you're not gonna be able to do it all your life. So you're gonna be doing it for a set period of time. And then when you achieve the weight you want, you're going to stop and then you're gonna gain back all of the weight. And it's just not a sustainable way to lose weight or to be healthy. Healthy eating should and really can be enjoyable. It just takes a while if you've never been used to it, but trust me, it is so worth it. So no to diets, but yes to healthier eating habits. Once you've mastered the basics of nutrition, once you know how to create healthy and balanced meals, and once you have general notions about macro and micronutrients, about portion sizes, and about how many calories are in each food, and all of these things, then you can move on to a more intuitive and mindful approach to eating. I personally practice intuitive eating and encourage everyone to do the same, but I absolutely acknowledge that it is not necessarily the right thing for everyone. Some people just thrive off of guidelines and rules and like to be regulated in what they eat and that's that's understandable. And also, if that's the case for you, then, you know, you don't have to try to eat intuitively. And if you haven't gone through all of the steps that I talk about in this video, then you may not be ready for intuitive eating just yet. Basically, intuitive eating is an evidence-based approach to eating that relies on your internal hunger and fullness cues instead of outside rules and regulations. And it helps you have a better, healthier relationship with food, and it helps you get away from diet culture. Now, I'm not going to go too into detail into intuitive eating because I already made a ton of videos about that. So make sure to check out my intuitive eating playlist right here or in the description if that is something you're interested in. One important aspect of intuitive eating is to eat mindfully and mindful eating is a technique used to regain control over your eating habits. It involves being in tune with your body, listening to your hunger fullness cues and taking the time to eat, taking the time to chew and focusing solely on your food without any distractions. And again, I have a video about mindful eating if you're interested right here or in the description. It's also super important to develop a healthy relationship with food when you are looking to go on a healthy eating journey. So intuitive and mindful eating can help you do that. And I also have a bunch of videos and also articles on the subject if you're interested in learning more. So videos on how to ditch diet culture, the dangers of the all or nothing mentality, how to deal with food guilt and food obsession, and all of these things that I'm gonna be putting in the description as well. And now I want to talk about health beyond healthy eating because that is very important as well. Hopefully you now have a better idea about what to eat, what not to eat, and what to do and not to do for healthy eating, but here are a few more things that I want to touch on. First of all, you can follow all of the tips in the world, but if you're not in the correct mindset for healthy eating, then nothing will stick. When you are expected to make a radical change in your eating habits or in your life without changing radically the way you think, then it's just bound to fail. There is an optimal mindset to have for weight loss and nutrition, and it's one that people who are naturally thin have had for all their life, but thankfully you can get that mindset too. So you can check out the video I made about that right here or in the description. In addition, even if what you eat accounts for the majority of your physique, exercise should not be left behind. Exercise has so many great health benefits, and even if its impact on nutrition and weight loss isn't as big as you think it is, is still super important to exercise. It can make you lose fat, but it can also reduce your risk of tons of diseases and improve your sleep quality, decrease your stress levels, improve your mental health, etc. And the good thing with exercise is that there are so many different ways to exercise. You are bound to find something that you like and an exercise that you like, even if it's just walking your dog, going for a run, swimming, biking, hiking, dancing, rollerblading. There's like literally so many ways to exercise. And you can even follow exercise videos on the internet from the comfort of your own home so you don't have the excuse of not wanting to go out. And finally, your mental health and general well-being is so, so, so important when you're trying to be healthy because if you're losing all the weight but you're feeling miserable and you hate what you're eating and you're not happy with your choices then what is the point really so make sure to check in with yourself often to make sure that you're doing the things that are actually making you happy and be gentle with yourself and be proud of your progress even if it's smaller than you'd like that's it for this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it don't
don't forget to like it and subscribe and make sure to check out all of my other videos that really go more in depth into a bunch of the subjects I talked about and see you on my next video. Bye!